red themselves are the Red Cannons with Vieira playing Malfurion, Hamtaro playing his Anubarak, Typhex playing Arthas, Jay Shritte playing Tychus, and finally Letho, Letho Saras playing Gul'dan. Need at least a nice defense from Tempo Storm to make sure they have that well still, but the time has come for a potentially the first big fight is Cattle stocks in. Yes, this is the breaking point here. Can Tempo Storm go in for an engage? June moves in. Big drag hits on Malfurion. He falls. And suddenly, Tempo Storm are taking massive plays here. Saul moves in and gets a second kill. Cattle moves in. The root comes out instantly. We're going to have the Horrify going out, but not connecting. Cocoon be in use, and Tempo Storm is moving in. Look at their health bars. They're ready to get kills. There goes the Malfurion Typhex low as well. And they're going to try and push and get what they can here. A full fight would be scary, and Tempo Storm is aware of that. Fury moves in with the Condemned, grabbing Typhix here on the left side. He's low on health. Cattle helping out in the engage as well. Horrify was great. Twilight Dream hit a couple. The engage was trying to come in before Anubarak got to the team, and he will get here, but at what cost? Because so many of the members of Red Cannons are low. But miraculously, so far, they have survived. There's no Blessed Shield left. There's only Palm left. There will be Cursed Bullet in a few. But finally, Tempo Storm gets the opening they're looking for in this fight. They take down one. They're looking for another one. Cattle's there. Use Apex Predator to get back in. Slight Ice Block from Viera. This looks like it could be the end if Tempo Storm can get any more kills. Well, immediately a stock out, and Genji leaves. Now, all of a sudden, they're there here at the Temple. They get one kill. Malfurion's oh. down. Cattle shows up. Gets dragged. It's a second kill. And Tempo Storm finally finds their opening. Finally dropping all the way down. Could this be game for Tempo Storm? The answer is going to be yes. Tempo Storm gains the first victory of the game. He's playing it nice and slow. In the red, their opponents, Hamtaro playing Dahaka, Letho playing Cassia, Vieira on Ariel, a favorite of his, Typhex playing Tyrael, also a favorite, and finally, Jay Shritte playing Zeratul. Really wanting to hit those cues when Murden comes up with the Storm Bolt, either follows up, and can just take out a target as quickly as possible, Tyrael in particular. Speaking of Tyrael, here he is burning down the left side. First kill for Temple of Storm. Uther as well bringing out a stun on Hamtaro, but he will be able to escape. Zeratul at the same time in the top right corner was killed by Psalm. Assuming that the red cannons are actually not as macro intensive as you would think, because you start missing small amounts of experience, and that can really stack up, especially on a major battleground like this. However, Fury on the left side, in trouble. June comes in for a heal. He's going to get stunned and get some wall there. Does get the last second flood heal on Fury, but June may pay for the death here. Fury, unfortunately, being his teammate in the death. That really wasn't that great of a play there, unless Red Candace moved in and actually tried to use a Void Prison and force a fight. Well, we have two nukes on the board. Temple Storm gets one. The Hawk is just hanging out in the top lane. The fight's going to break out over the mid nuke. Constant poke from Tempo Storm. They hunt. win this poke where the hunt comes out. Age is used here for the last second. Not much healing available. Syndication will also be burned out. There is not very much healing available for Ario because no damage has come out. And Tempo Storm steamrolls in this fight. Two people down, a third being killed off as well. Hamtaro actually with the L bar will be able to live for now, but Psalm continues the chase. So well done from Tempo Storm, especially Fury to keep the members of Red Cannons in the fight after things started to go south. Sanctification used, Void Prison at the same time used. Right now, Red Cannons realize they have to make something happen. They're about to hit 13. They move in for an engage. Typhix leads the charge. Hamtaro does get over here and brings out a drag, but with Divine Shield as well as a hunt, they're going to stop this fight. Uh, they have to split, though. There's the Archangel's Wrath. Uther's been taken out. Detainment Strike perfect to take out Murden. A two for one in favor of Red Cannons, but they're not done. They notice Battle Bucks here. Drag pulls him back into the Aegis damage, and that's a nuke drop from Tempo. I actually like the pickup here from Tempo Storm. They are intending to stop all types of fights here from Red Cannons. Now, can they continue to do so with 16 hitting? That's the next question here. With all heroics available for the Latin American team, they could come in for an engage. Normbolt missed, but Hammer of Justice does not. That's Bone Lightning, though. Here comes the hunt. As soon as Typhix wanted to go in, Void Prison catches a ton of the members no of sank. both teams. Sank not up for six seconds here. Tyrael will fall. Illidan continues to flip around, brings up the damage. Tyrael trade procs on the Divine Shield, so Saul won't take any damage. He continues to fight. He will be blinded. Jay Shredday coming around the side. Once he gets killed, doesn't do so. Gets low. He will trade one for one as Zeratul and Greymane fall. It's going to be a three for two trade overall. They even set up in the Fog of War. Their opponents haven't seen them here, so if we have anyone overstep like Letho, they could go in for an engagement. Able to walk away just barely. Got back in the nick of time. Fury may be questioning it to 
jump in for Pos Nukes. Starting to land, starting to fall. Void Prison stops one, while Red Cannons try to bring down this boss. A second nuke will connect. Remember, Tempo Storm has framing, but importantly, Illidan. Tyrael has already been taken out. The core is falling 40%, 20%. It's Tempo done. Storm takes game two. Such an E-star draft, you said. But let's take a look at the left side team here first in the blue. It's going to be Red, Canid, Jay Shritto on Greyman, Viera on Malf, Hamtaro on the Haka, Typhex on Diablo, and Lithosaurus on Gul'dan. Why I struggle with the Diablo is because both of us... Oh, wait a minute here. Oh, Jay Shritto getting Shritte. caught out. Make a run for it. He doesn't make it, man. Beautiful hat coming out there. That is going to be the first kill here for E-Star in this game. All right, yeah. And, well, let's see if the Red Cannons can adapt to this. They're going to move in to the Shrine now, starting to get a few skeletons. But nice for E-Star, they get the first few. And Avatar, in the meantime, getting infinite value at the bottom lane. The big charge there on Tyrael, but he gets out for now. Viera is in a tough spot, and he actually ends up going down. That's the first kill, but H follows quickly. The uh -oh. passive from Tyrael is gonna explode, doing so much damage, and Savage looks like he is gonna have a heyday cleaning up this fight. Even Jing Chen surviving, dashing over the wall. Five for nothing, two minutes in this game. E-Star looks on fire. Okay, so the delay in itself is nice to get to that level 10 point, but of course it also means that they get level seven talent spike, which means they can get more out of this Punisher, and they're starting to go on Diablo here. Go, go for the rest. Internet's gonna get out for now. Savage. He's not done. He's gonna keep going. The smite giving them the mobility. Typhax looks like he is not going to be able to survive this situation. That is the first by Hamtaro with the burrow. He gets the drag onto Uther, but SW, he manages to survive the circumstances and Jing Shen trying to get that poke out. He goes in Uther, now in ghost form, has those heals, and now Savage and Jing Chen are pretty much just going to clean up here. Punisher still has been removed, but they have the night camp pushing out. Savage! He savage. makes it! He makes it out. What a savage. Meantime, Uther completes his quest while in his devotion form. The Haka goes down. This is a 10 versus 2 takedown situation. On to Genji. Typhax is not the target they're going to want, but they do end up going in onto him. The clone doing so much damage. There's the first dash. There's the second. No reset for Jing Chen. He goes in with the Dragon Blade, trying to make it work, but the suplex might have been enough. Oh, there's the G the shield. Time shield. <laughs> that was dirty. That was wonderful. Genius. It could potentially be the window of opportunity here for Red Cannons. Now, they're trying to go for Tyrael. Remember when they tried at the shrine? It turned around on them, and Genji is close. Closing in. Nice cleanse oh, ho, ho. on Gul'dan. The silence. They all show up out of nowhere, and Lethos taking the damage oh, out. They do use the clone, but now that is already Gul'dan dead. Viera is now in a bad spot. Drops the Twilight Dream. They end up using the Apoc as well. The stun goes down. Tyrael ends up dying, but the passive ends up locking in Viera there with the hunt. And the hunt, yeah, takes down Malfurion. No ice block yet on the map, of course. Diablo goes down. That's a reset of his souls goes back to zero. Doesn't mean he comes back right away, but I assume he would have liked to extend his hibernation a little bit if it meant more survivability with those souls. This is going to be hard to farm back, especially with how E-Star has been dominating the lanes. Uther goes down, but, you know, it doesn't really gain him that much, per se. Has the opportunity to gain the same talent here, nor, you know, take the fight without Uther there. So now, essentially, E-Star volunteering for this four versus five. They just go in again, just Hit the oh. go button, no hesitation. <laughs> All right, so now the engage is gonna be here. 16 talents here, nowhere to be found. Apocalypse is used only hitting H. Desperation for red cannons. The hunt goes over the wall. There's a lot of damage on its material, but he uses the divine shield. Horrify, splitting Savage away from the fight. Lethos gets punished by the judgment, and now that is the first fight. E-Star are just Ooh. turning it up. <laughs> He tried to go through the terrain, Genji, stopping at 40% of the mark with that swift bank off of blinds. You yeah. can't use hard crowd control, because Uther will just make him invincible. They're threatening to end. 23 takedowns to 6. There we go with the hunt. Glenn's on Gul'dan. No problem. Savage gets out. Judgment goes in there. There is going to be the apocalypse. Every ghost buddy going down the holy ground, splitting people, but the silence there on Deterial. They do end up getting the first pick. Did E Star go too far? Divine Shield, the Dragon Blade. Jing Chen just ripping through the health bars of red cannons. 
but they do not get a pick here. Five versus four. Red Cannons, they want it so desperately, but 20's been picked up here for E-Star. Yep, level 20 has been picked up, means Illidan has both of the storm. Uther doesn't mind dying because he has redemption. He's going to be coming back, and in the meantime, he's giving armor oh, and healing. The bait there with the 20 picked up into the redemption. They get the kill on Uther, and that is not the target they wanted. <laughs> healing everybody here into the skirmish and opening up what will be the end of no! this game. <laughs> Malfurion! Nope. In the end, E Star 27 to 8 is going to end this game. Yep, that's the most takedowns, the earliest five man wipe, and one of the most fun games of the mid season brawl yet. Day two, E Star naps that first map. This is a chance here for Red Canoots. They're going to be in the blue on the left. Jay Schritt on Bala, Viera, Ariel, Typhex on Joanna, Lithosaurus on Nazebo, and Hamtaro on Sonia. That is in the long run. I'm confident that Viora can trade pretty well with the wave clear. Valera getting the ganks out, especially up on bottom. Beautiful follow up there. Jing Chen getting the first blood. Can they get more? That is now a beautiful stun. Body uh -oh. block. Okay, nice. Very nice cheap shot there by Savage. Uther with the Hammer of Justice. The cheap shot on Sonia. The slow at the same time by H, and they take him down. Really matters. This is a wonderful situation where imagine if this Dragonite. Oh, let those. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, the Temporal Loop. Oh, and the time trap behind Ariel as well. Leoric goes down, and that's the first little good news here for Red Candice to do the laser. Well, he would be able to survive that, but the temporal loop pulled him before the time trap. Yeah. So it must have been a misskill shot of some way, shape, or form. Tiger. Oh, nice. Very nice for Red Candice. Uh, <laughs> good old Trixler to look into here. The bye-bye. You wave in their face as you go back to your base. You know, I heard it's the best talent in the game. Blessed Shield on the Savage. He drops the Cloak of Shadows, but straight. Too much damage here. Red Cannon's fighting back to be able to stall out, you know, towards that league game. We might find ourselves a moment where we get to see Can Nazebo compete at the international level if he makes it to his actual spike. Yep, that is the question. L let's see, Vieira in the meantime getting just absolutely hammered by Savage. He started, he never stopped. They do get back Leoric, but Leoric is going to be coming back. Sonia goes down. Typhax running for his life. Tiger hitting that a beautiful Q down. The Clint, or excuse me, the Iron Skin used Lethos. Takes the damage, it's gonna be missed. Go for the throw, doesn't get the profit! Nazebo showing off why he is known for being one of the most healthy hero or assassins in the game. Pulling ahead. Yep, they're pulling ahead. They're getting the four, they're getting the three kills potentially. Oh, the spin. That's a lot of heal, but it's not gonna be enough. Misses the tame and strike Piera. And it's just raining and then pouring. Red cannons try to peel, try Tiger. to protect. Oh, that was so oh, What? what? <laughs> so close. My goodness. Sublime. On the Zebo, keeps getting more survivable, more HP. Uh, we've got Gloom. Well, anyway, here's the fight. Big Dragon's Breath by Chromie. She completes her quest. That's a lot of bonus damage there on that. In the meantime, Uther does go down. Goes down to that middle Dragonite that they've really essentially removed all the HP too early. The Entomb catching it out. Hamtaro with a lot of healing. He's very far away from his teammates. Ferocious healing, Nurse of Steel, not enough. Can the counter engage be relevant? Nice teleport by Savage there, using that Cloak of Shadows and the oh. maximum range, Blessed Shield. They get it to spiders. spiders. He gets the shadow. Okay, so he stealthed out. Oh, the oh, about to shot. Oh, oh, what? No. Valera's the best hero in the game. Uh, confirmed. 20's been achieved. A Dragonite up here 16 minutes in. I will know Isar needs to be safer with this. They have an advantage, but they need to be getting this keep minimum now. Oh, they <laughs> just deleted Bala. The reaction time wasn't there for the, Red Connets. The temporal loop ended up hitting two people, Nazebo and Sonia. Sonia survives. Nazebo drops the ice block to make sure he is not affected. So Aegis is here, temporal loop down for another 56 seconds. Beautiful stun, nice follow-up zombie while blocking out SW. He does have the redemption, though, if he goes down. Hamtaro eats so much damage. Now Uther does die, so heals are going to be available now for E-Star. But Aegis ends up going down. This is what we needed here for Red Cannon to be able to take this game. The pressure against them is huge. <laughs> Uther is back. Divine shields himself. Wow. 
Sonia goes down, Vala goes down, the turnaround here by E-Star. It looked like this was Red Canis' playground, but it's just turning to ashes. And look at this, just everybody's ignoring the Johanna. She's doing her best, trying to tank some of the damage, but everybody just doesn't care. Chromi throwing spells behind, doing so much damage with the accent of Lyra. <laughs> Johanna with the double kill, though, not bad. Oh, man, there's the indestructible. All right. It's only a matter of time. Is there a world where Johanna survives? No way. No way. Bye bye. He, he, he did it. He erupted the bye bye. <laughs> Interrupts the bye bye. But Leoric is coming back. No way. He did it. He got that kill. That means oh, so much. You get staggering that debt. Oh, Leoric. hard and shield. They just they surprised me with all their talent picks. In the meantime, going for the bottom keep. Johanna was able to get three kills before. Can't she do it again? I believe Indestructible is still available. Sonya spinning to oh, win. They drop the Divine Shield out, but SW goes down. I believe Redemption uh -oh, is not there. Bye -bye. Hey, oh, beautiful wall there to be able to make sure nobody can aggress now. But they get another pick. Valera is down. 62 seconds where Red Cannons need to find a way. Keep should be the minimum reward here. Can Red Cannons do it without losing someone? There's the Entomb to buy a bit more time. And Typhax now is Where's going... Where's the Shield of Hope? Oh, what? double what? W! The Wait. Dragon's Breath just bodied him! Where is the Shield of Hope? Did he not have it? And he ends up getting the Temporal Loop, dropping it back. Ice Block is going to be used to make sure he stays in position. Now H is just getting skirmished here by Ham Taro. And he doesn't even go down. The supporting there from SW keeps it alive. 26 seconds. We've got ourselves a Dragonite, and E-Star pulls ahead once more. Pressure through top. That's where your catapults are. That's where the core pressure is. They're so afraid to go to top. They because just they lost keep going bottom. Keep. Yeah, but because they don't want to lose their final keep. But they're paying for it. Hard to shield again. Yorick, whatever, and two lingering apparition, drain hope. And in the meantime, look at this. Yorick goes down. They do a little bit of clear. Johanna. That's oh! that is it. Dragonite, yeah, that's it. Felt it coming. The Divine Shield is going to be enough to secure a Dragonite now. 45 seconds for push. They need to move straight for it. But what is great? Oh, he moves back. They're going bottom. They're split pushing through bottom, too. They are legitimately <laughs> took. Like, I've never seen a team move so slow. Like, it's almost like the triple keep. They just view it like you don't kill the court. You just get the pressure off. They get the kill. A okay. no bye bye. Nothing. That is now a kill. But the yeah. Dragonite, oh, look yes. at this. Yeah, it was a bait. It was like, bye bye. You lost the game. <laughs> 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 7% per hit, finally, E-Star, close it out in this exhilarating second.